Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Anchor Star Wealth Market Update. I'm your host, Allison Anchor Star, and today we'll be talking about the recent bounce in the crypto markets as well as an upgrade this morning of Chinese EV maker NEO. We'll close with today's question of the day about Amazon and its potential breakup value. But before we begin, as a reminder, this is a financial education presentation and should not be construed as personal financial advice. Full disclaimer, information is available at anchorstarwealth.com. Good morning, Steve. Yesterday, we talked about the potential invasion of Ukraine by Russia. Today, an article on CNBC highlights the use of Bitcoin to fund Ukrainian operations. What's your take on this and the crypto markets as a whole? Hey, well, good morning, everyone. And thank you, Allison. Let me get the correct screen shared out here. So there we go. So, so interesting, right? So we talked about the whole situation yesterday. Uh, massing on the border could be imminent. Uh, who, who knows how that's exactly going to, to play out? But a unique as financial aspect of this is that the there's some there's some crowdfunding of, of a war going on, if you will, or potential for war, right? So if you can kind of see, this is for an article from CNBC.com that donations, you know, pouring in, you get down in here to Ukrainian activists have been deployed for a variety of purposes, including equipping the Ukrainian army with military gear, medical supplies, and drones. So overall, the total uh, the total number here, again, translated into dollars is almost $300,000 of money coming in to support uh, the defense of Ukraine, which is interesting, right? So when you think about crypto and why it's so attractive to people, it's because they don't trust their government or any governments uh, and it allows them to do things that, and support things that may not necessarily uh, the government may or may not, not support, right? So here you have people taking things into their own hands and they have a mechanism to be able to fund uh, the army, at least for or help out with the uh, the army situation over there. So it, it's really kind of an interesting. We know San Salvador is using Bitcoin as their, their national currency. Now we have our kind of what I would call first real, you know, international potential conflict uh, where crypto is involved in funding it. So uh, it, it's pretty interesting, certainly something to keep an eye on. Now, when you talk about the crypto markets as a whole, it has been insane, right? And I think this is, I'll just pull up Bitcoin here on uh, CNBC. So you can see the, the one year ride. Uh, we went all the way up towards the end of the year from 30,000 to above 60,000. Bitcoin was clearly going to 100,000 by the end of December. That was obvious until it didn't, right? Now, and I say that sarcastically because people tend to think, you know, recency bias, right? So the fact that it's screaming higher, that it will always scream higher. Uh, people thought Ethereum was going to 5,000. Well, neither of them quite made it. And not only did they not make it, they got cut in half, right? So almost in half, uh, all the way down to bottom to 35, and now it's going back higher. So I will say this, much like I said earlier with the attractiveness of crypto is such that you're either, you know, Bitcoin, people say it's a store of value. I believe that personally. The other cryptos, I tend to think Ethereum is the next one down, if you will, from a best of breed, a little more useful functions of Ethereum. <clears throat> but either way, if you're in crypto, be in it for the right reasons. If you're in it to make a quick buck or I'm going to be a millionaire overnight because I saw a 15-year-old on TikTok who did that, that's not the right reason. You're in it because you have an, just a distrust of governments and their ability to manage uh, a currency, right? Because all currencies are fiat currencies, or well, at least government-backed currencies are fiat currencies. So this now allows a separate currency, currencies to exist, and you know they have for two decades, uh, and be have have use outside of government regulation, right? So if you're in crypto, don't sell it. You would not you would not dream of selling it here just because it got cut in half, right? Uh, if you believe, you believe for the long term. So don't be in it for the quick buck. Otherwise, you're going to get shaken out of it. If uh, you're in it for the long term, though, you buy it, you hold it. And really, if you, you know, most folks should have been buying on this dip. If you believe you got the, the sale of a lifetime, you know, 50 half off at the at the Bitcoin store uh, here in in January. So, uh, I, you know, I think I think investing in crypto is valid for a small portion of your portfolio. Uh, for most people, unless you're an expert, then you, you know, you can go, you can treat it as your primary. But for most people, a small position, uh, you know, if you understand it, want to participate, Bitcoin or Ethereum is the way to go. 
Now switching gears from Ukraine to China, Chinese EV make Neo received a huge upgrade this morning. Is it time to invest in Chinese companies again? Well, there's always risk in investing in China, right? And a lot of people are just like, you know, keep me clear of China until things settle down. Well, when you talk about massive upside, and I'm thinking of the original story of Neo, I was in it back when it was below $5. I think it ballooned up to 80. We'll take a look at the chart here in a second. <clears throat> now it's back down significantly south of that, uh, some of which uh, I've had it in the book literally for years. Uh, so when you look at you know, China as a whole, there's always risks there because of the government and its involvement in the free markets. Now, we have involvement in the free markets, too. We're going to talk about a potential monopoly situation here for our question of the day here shortly. But certainly the Chinese government has been active in kind of crushing the profitability, if you will, uh, of your investment if you're investing in China. So uh, there's a steer clear of China. If you want to steer clear, that's fine. But if you want to also load up on things while they're super cheap, China is a pretty good space to take a look. And inside of China, uh, certainly the EV space being electric vehicle, it has taken off. Of course, over here we have Tesla and all the other players, right? Uh, I don't even want to list them all, but certainly Tesla leading the pack. And then, you know, overseas, there's hundreds of Chinese EV makers. And me personally, uh, from years ago, thought Neo was the best of breed. They have really cool calls, go to, cool cars. Go to uh, in, in Neo, NIO.com and, and you can see that. But certainly Barclays taking an interest here, seeing more than a 40% upside is the article this morning. And let's just go ahead and take a look at the chart real quick. We'll back this out to a five-year chart and you can kind of see the story. So back in... You know, gosh, this was 2020. You know, this is your COVID. It didn't really sell off or it didn't take off, but it sat around that three to four dollars forever uh, and then ballooned up to above 60. I said 80 earlier. It wasn't, it was 60. Um, so really there was a 10x move here from below five dollars to above 50 is what I remember. Uh trim some off and now now it's back down here, kind of a steady sell-off. So when you look at this chart, five years is not all that useful, but when you look at a one-year chart, certainly there's an attractive entry point here. So I will summarize by saying, uh, if you want to steer clear of China, just steer clear until you know you get a better feel for things. But there are some bargain basement Chinese companies that are out there right now that I think will that will be the story three years from now or two years from now is the huge move up in the Chinese companies. Now, you don't know when it's coming. So, you know, better to be uh, three hours early than three minutes late sometimes. So I don't mind getting in stuff early and looking foolish as it sits there and does nothing or just leaks and loses money for a while because you're going to ca capture a move uh, to the upside. So that's what I have to say about uh, investing in China. Last question, a client asked, is breaking up Amazon or in general Google something to consider in the next few years or with a potential change in party control of the House and Senate in 2022? Well, What's I think that's it. Oh, I'm sorry about that, uh, Allison, for cutting you off there. But I think that is a, a great question. And I think it's going to happen regardless of the political climate, right? So when you talk about the biggest companies in the world, you know, Apple, Amazon, uh, Google, um, you name it, I'm sure I'm listing, leaving several off the list, but it kind of doesn't matter. The people that are ending, ending up in front of Congress, as if it's their fault, uh, for growing these massive companies that take care of goods and services that we all, not all of us, but you know, the majority of the U.S. rely upon, eventually they're going to continue to grow until they need to be broken up. So the only real you know, thing I can think of here that at least have, you know, and depending on your age, I'm 52, so I remember this. But, you know, the Ma Bell breakup of the 80s where you had Ma Bell and then all of a sudden you had shares, which my grandfather worked for Bell. That's why we know this, because we had all these shares. And then we had shares of eight different companies that broke out of that. And really, for the most part, all of them took off. So I love the fact that I think eventually we will be looking at uh, a breakup in the big names and they will be more valuable in their parts as well. When you think of, I was looking for a graphic, I never did find one this morning, <clears throat> but certainly Amazon Web, Web Services is the big deal there. They have their online marketplace, of course, 
which is Amazon. They have their content in Amazon Prime. And then they have other uh, core products like Kindle, Alexa. Oh, she's probably going to chime in here now. Uh, and other subscription uh, services. So there's all kinds of way you could, ways you could slice that. When you think Google, you can slice off uh, YouTube pretty easy, right? And, and other services, the Nest and everything else that they have. So I think as a shareholder, as the stock prices, you, know, you get it to Amazon, which is, uh, you know, around th floats around three, 3,000 a share. Um, they could do a stock split like Google did. But when you think, okay, 30, uh, 3150 this morning, you know, if they break this company up, I think if you take the parts of the whole, it's going to be more than the original stock price. So if they, you know, if they have to go in front of Congress, whether it's before or after the midterm elections, uh, and Congress is like, nope, you need to break up, or they choose to break up, which would probably be a little bit better of an option of saying, hey, we know this is coming, so let's go ahead and do it on our terms instead of the Department of Justice telling us what to do. Um, maybe they choose to break things up on their own. But either way, I think uh, I think as a shareholder, no problemo of loading up on these big stock, these big names, because eventually if they split or when they split, uh, it's going to be worth more. The parts are going to be worth more than the whole. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. Please submit your questions as a comment through social media or directly to our e email at VIP services at anchorstarwealth.com. That's all we have for today's show. I'm Allison Inkerstar, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.